Oh well, hey, this is Trav. Today we're going to build a birdhouse out of salvaged materials. One thing I really like about birdhouses is that it's artificial habitat that we are creating. Often it seems that the things we do kind of tear down nature or perhaps fight against it. Whereas a birdhouse is something that you yourself build and put out in your yard or perhaps in an open space and it creates a nesting box habitat artificially created by us that helps wild birds. It's kind of a neat feeling. It's fun to build a birdhouse out of old wood and materials but otherwise would just end up in a dumpster somewhere. If you don't have a license plate and you're looking for a roofing material, old corrugated metal like this off of a shed or a barn, an outbuilding, makes great roof material. Okay, now we need to decide on the height of the birdhouse. So we're gonna use this old piece of wood here as the front. This will be the face. This is where the hole will be. And um, this board is 30 inches long or so, but I'm thinking that we'll probably go 14 to the peak. And we'll bend our license plate at this point to make the roof. I think 14 inches will give us a real nice looking birdhouse. I smashed this finger two weeks ago and uh, look at it, it's healing nicely. I'm finally able to use it again. It's a good thing we heal. This board is three and three quarter inches across, so the midpoint of that is one and seven eighths. I'm just going to go ahead and mark that right here. I could also use that on the square, but this is just down to eighths and it's got a little bit of old paint and stuff on it, so a tape measure is a little easier to read. Now from that point, we wanna put a couple of 45s for the pitch on the roof. We could do a more shallow pitched roof, but I like 45, gives it a real nice look. So from that midpoint right there, at one and seven eighths, draw a line. Do the same thing for the other side, just using a speed square here. Great. Now that'll be the front of the birdhouse facing you, and that'll be the pitch on the roof. What we'll do is, for this other piece of salvaged material, I'll just set these atop one another and do the cuts and get them both cut to length at the same time. We'll set this to a 45. hard material and a fairly dull blade but we got through it. Now we've got the front and the back to our birdhouse made. Let's work on the sides now. I'm not sure what this board was used for. You can see where a cat's paw has been on here to break those nails free. And this originally at one point had a bunch of these quarter inch bolts through it. There's only two remaining but I think it gives it kind of a nice look. We're going to use this for the sides of the birdhouse. So what we need to do is measure how long the side of this is, but we don't want to come all the way up. We want to leave a little bit of space. So underneath that overhang, if this is our roof, there's a gap. Remember, we're looking for some circulation and airflow that'll come up through the bottom and be able to come out the top so it doesn't get so hot inside the birdhouse. So four, 14 inches to the peak and we're gonna go 11 and a half inches on each of the sides. Both sides of these are pretty neat, but actually the better weathered side out, I think will look a lot better. Those will be the, the sides of our birdhouse. This will be the front. This will be the back. Now another important thing with a birdhouse is it needs to be uh, able to be opened up year after year in the springtime and cleaned. So we need to uh, make a clean out. So we've got airflow is one thing we're looking for and a clean out is another. So I typically take and make one of the panels um, able to swing out a simple hinging system. Some new 
but a lot of old nails, the rusted nails. You can see the difference in this old nail head as opposed to the new. And on a salvaged birdhouse, I like to use old salvaged fasteners like this nail. So with using this old salvaged material, I don't want to split the wood. So these nails were too long. I've actually cut them off, so it's a pretty blunt end. It may not split, but just to be safe, I'm going to pre-drill the holes and then run my nails down through the hole. Then we can sink that nail in there. We'll just start it here first. Run that right down into that hole. This is going to hinge up something like this. You'll be able to pull out the old nesting material, push it back into place, reattach or tighten up this old screw, and that will keep predators out. That's the third thing we want is predator avoidance. So we're going to do that by having the birdhouse be solid and secure. It's not able to be opened without removal of a screw. Another thing with predator avoidance is the overhang, which we'll have with the roof, as well as the position, depending on where you decide to hang your birdhouse. We're going to be putting the, the hole of the birdhouse, and that's the fourth thing that's important, is the size or the diameter of the hole. This is an inch and a half. I'm going to be putting the birdhouse hole about right there, so therefore I want the hinge point with these nails to be above it. If we have it lined up with the, the hole, then our nails can potentially come through. Do the same on the other side. We'll sink those in so you can see there's about three quarter of an inch bite onto each side. Beautiful, now the front of that birdhouse will, will hinge on this point right here and be nice for clean out year after year. One thing I can do is you lay something on here like a coin or even this piece of scrap pipe to get an idea of where the hole's gonna be and what it's gonna look like. You don't want the hole down low for a couple of reasons. Number one, the bird needs to come in and be able to build a nest. And if you put it too low, there's not room for the nest material. Also, if a predator, it's easier for a predator to get in. Perhaps a snake or something or a raccoon that can just come up the pole and grab hold. Whereas if you're Putting this on top of a post, then your entrance is up higher away from predators, closer to the roof. Also, perhaps helps keep some of the weather out and uh, looks better anyways, for my personal opinion. So we're gonna measure in an inch and seven eighths on both sides and just make sure that lines up with our center. A house wren is gonna have a much smaller entrance than say a wood duck. And in this case, we're gonna go with an inch and a half. Inch and three eighths is great for mountain bluebirds, but an inch and a half I can get violet green tree swallows and any other number of birds. So I'm gonna just put the point of this hole saw right there on that center point that I've marked. I'm gonna go ahead and put a hole in this birdhouse. Okay, so I've just cut the board for the base of the birdhouse and I've removed all four of the corners and there's a reason for that. Once this is placed in here, I want to create a little bit of an air gap for ventilation. What I don't ever do is put a perch on my birdhouses. Garbage birds like house sparrows and starlings are more attracted to birdhouses with perches. So I almost never put one on unless it's just kind of more of a, a decorative type birdhouse. I'm gonna put this license plate right there on that, with my mark on the top and on the bottom. That's gonna follow our line, which we've put across. I could mark my line all the way across and just erase it later, but I'm just gonna 
put some pressure on here and bend this license plate right in the center. Just even pressure. And so you can tell it's hitting in that number seven, doesn't want to bend real straight. But it's actually, actually doing pretty well there, okay? You can see that that license plate is gonna go right on the top there. I think that's gonna look real nice. It overhangs. Again, we've got ventilation up underneath, and it's also gonna keep the weather out for some time. Here's just some inch long old roofing nails. Just need four of them. Four holes that are already in this license plate for attachment to your vehicle are gonna work out on this particular birdhouse. We're gonna just run them right through these holes, these one inch roofing nails. Again, we wanna avoid any nails going into our clean out or else this won't open and close. So I'm gonna catch the shoulder out here on the edges of the birdhouse. That's what's gonna um, take the nail to attach our roof. Now look at that. Four roof and nails to hold that Wyoming license plate on the top. So when this is mounted up on a post or the side of a barn, not only does it look very nice, but it's practical and functional as well. Let's put that screw right here in the bottom of our clean out. So I found a piece of scrap wire. I'm gonna just take this and look at the back of our birdhouse. Let's cut this off uh, to match on both sides pretty close. I'll just bend the ends of this wire in and uh, angled upwards slightly. And what I'll do is we're going to just drill a couple of holes in the back of the birdhouse. One here and one there. Attach this and that way you've got something to hang the birdhouse on. All right, so just put a screw here in this fence. We're gonna hang our rustic birdhouse up and see how it looks. Once I hang the birdhouse on the fence, I open it up and I'll run a screw through the back wall to secure it to the fence. This keeps your birdhouse from blowing off in the wind or being knocked off by a predator. Here's the birdhouse, do you like it? Wow, would you look at that? Pretty nice. Now it's just a matter of time. Come on, bird. There we go, what do you think? Yeah. Please subscribe to my channel so I can afford to get a new full saw bit for this uh, drill. <laughs> you gonna put one in the back for the back door? No egress on this one. with our super smooth shots on. There we go. We don't have to film this usually. Now the bottom's attached, you know. Mm -hmm. People get it, I think. <laughs>